Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this three-part series on audio interfaces. If you haven't watched part one, where we talk about the basics and answer some frequently asked questions on audio interfaces, you can do so by clicking right here. In this video, we will be taking a more in-depth look at all the analog and digital connections commonly found on audio interfaces and what they can be used for. So let's get to it. Before we talk about the analog connections found on audio interfaces, we need to explain the concept of balanced and unbalanced connections. A standard audio cable consists of two wires or conductors. The signal wire, that predictably carries a signal, and the ground wire or shield, that protects the signal from outside interference. This kind of connection is called a mono-unbalanced connection. If we add an extra signal wire to this cable and use it to transfer another unrelated signal, the connection becomes a stereo unbalanced connection, like the connection you find on your headphones. If instead, we use that second signal wire to transfer an inverted copy of the first signal, also referred to as inverse phase or polarity, we can create a balanced connection. If these two signals are summed or added together, they will cancel each other out because they are identical but with inverse polarity. Balanced connections use this concept to eliminate noise in a relatively simple but ingenious way. If, while traveling through the cable, the two signals had picked up noise, that noise would be identical in both signals. At the end of the cable, the receiving gear flips the second signal before summing the two together. When the polarity of the second signal is flipped back, the original signals are now back in phase, but the noise picked up by the second signal becomes inverted with respect to the noise on the first signal. When the two signals are summed, the noise in the first signal is cancelled out by the inverted noise in the second one, but the two original signals, that are now in phase, combine into a much stronger mono signal. And so, with that brief explanation in mind, let's check out the most common analog connections you can find on your audio interface and what they can be used for. The TS quarter inch jack is the simplest kind of audio connector. The connector is formed of two parts, the tip and the sleeve, and that's where it gets its name from. It's used on cables carrying a single or mono unbalanced signal and is most commonly found on instruments such as electric guitars and guitar pedals and line level unbalanced connections such as a mono output from a synthesizer. The TRS quarter inch jack gets its name from the tip, ring and sleeve that form the connector. Things can get a bit confusing here because it can be used in two distinctly different ways. As a stereo unbalanced connector, it's used in cables that carry two different line level audio signals, most commonly the left and right channels of headphones or the stereo out of DJ and consumer audio gear. It can also be used as a mono balance connector, which is the most usual line level input and output found on professional audio gear, such as mixing monitors, synthesizers, and rack effects. Ah, the ubiquitous mini jack. Potentially identical in function to its aforementioned bigger brothers, but most likely to be used in unbalanced stereo connections, such as the ones found on headphones and consumer audio gear. The XLR connector is a balanced mono connector, used by the vast majority of professional microphones, and also as an input and output on analog mixers and a lot of outboard gear. A combination of the previous two connectors is the XLR TRS combo jack. It's used as a space-saving feature in a lot of interfaces and can accept both XLR cables and balanced TRS cables. Since mono balanced cables can use either XLR or quarter-inch TRS connectors, you can also find cables that have a different connector on each side and could, for instance, connect the TRS output of a synthesizer to an XLR input of your interface's preamps. The RCA connector is an unbalanced mono connector but usually appears in the wild as a pair of connectors, one white, one red, used to carry a stereo unbalanced signal. It's also very common to find stereo unbalanced cables with RCA connectors on one side and a mini stereo jack on the other. Finally, a connector that can be found on larger audio interfaces is the DB25. It is used for large cables that carry eight balanced signals in parallel, while also taking up less panel space on your interface. Snake cables, where one end has eight separate XLR or TRS connectors, and the other a DB25 connector are also very popular. So if all this was a little bit too much information and was a little bit confusing, let's quickly recap all the analog connections we've just mentioned with the help of this handy chart. First, for the unbalanced connections, 
the mono quarter inch TS jack used for instrument or line level connections, the stereo quarter inch TRS jack which carries two separate channels used mainly for headphones or for stereo line level outputs in consumer and DJ gear, the 1 8 inch TS and TRS mini jack which is a smaller version of the previous two connectors, the RCA connector which commonly uses two separate white and red connectors and can also be found on stereo line level inputs and outputs in consumer and DJ gear. And for the balanced ones, the XLR connector, mainly found on microphones and line level outputs on professional gear, the TRS jack, which carries a mono signal and is also most commonly found on line level outputs on professional gear, the XLR TRS combo jack, which is a combination of the previous two, the DB25, which carries eight signals in one convenient large cable. So let's talk about the digital audio and connections commonly found on audio interfaces. First, we have the Sony Philips Digital Interface or SPDIF or SPDIF, <laughs> however you want to pronounce this. SPDIF carries two channels of digital audio and uses either a coaxial cable with RCA connectors, which you will most likely find on audio interfaces, or an optical cable with Toslink connectors, which is more common with modern smart TVs and consumer active speakers, such as soundbars. Very similar to the SPDIF is the AES slash EBU standard. Their main difference is that AES EBU is balanced and uses cables with XLR connectors. Another very popular digital interface is the ADAT light pipe or ADAT optical interface. It's a digital audio connection that uses optical cables with Toslink connectors. You can actually see if the cables are connected by the red light emitted by the connector. It's very practical for sending and receiving a lot of channels without noise and avoiding ground loop issues. Since the optical connection isolates the transmitting device from the receiving device. A more specialized digital audio interface is MADI. MADI supports transmission of up to 64 channels of audio on a single cable for ridiculously long distances of several kilometers using either coaxial cables with BNC connectors or optical cables with SC connectors. As you might have guessed, it's mostly found on expensive, specialized professional audio interfaces and it's probably overkill for most home studios. Now, there is another digital connection you will often find on your interface that does not carry audio information, but can be extremely useful for controlling and synchronizing all of your gear. And that is MIDI, which stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI is sometimes jokingly or erroneously linked to cheesy 90s synthesizer sounds, but in reality, MIDI does not carry or produce sound but rather provides a set of messages that help synthesizers, computers, and other studio gear communicate with each other. It can mainly instruct these devices what notes to play and how loudly to play them, and it can control their parameters remotely and synchronize their tempo. Traditionally, MIDI uses the 5-pin DIN connector and is unidirectional, meaning that you will need one port to receive MIDI from MIDI in and one port to send MIDI to your devices through MIDI out. MIDI can actually do much more than this and is probably one of the most important technological advancements in audio that has made this era of home recording possible, making it one of the most important things to master in your studio setup. We'd love to do an episode on the very interesting history of MIDI and the various ways you can use it to command and control your studio setup. So if you'd like to watch something like this, then let us know down below in the comments. Well, that's it for the second video of this series. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, we also have a podcast that you can listen to on all the platforms you might expect from Spotify to Apple to other platforms. And we will leave links to those down below in the description. We also have social media pages you can follow at Arbiters of Sound. Again, we will leave a link to those in the description. Get involved, ask us questions, let us know what you want us to cover in the following videos. See you on the next one for the final part of the audio interface series. Thanks everyone. Bye.